Fourth-year head coach Curtis Johnson will look to improve Tulane's 3-9 record from their first year in the American with a young group of returners that now have a year of experience under their belts. Coach Johnson leaned heavily on a talented freshman class last year, and the added experience of that group should produce results in the win column in 2015. The Green Wave will welcome back nine offensive starters, including quarterback Tanner Lee and running back Sherman Beatty. Lee, Beatty, and the seven top returning receivers are all sophomores. So now it's about building chemistry with a young and talented group. Tulane has explosive playmakers across its offense, and if the passing game can find some consistency, the balance could provide Beatty with quite a bit of opportunity this year. Defensively, six of last year's top seven linemen and six of seven linebackers returned. Linebacker Nico Marley registered over 13 tackles for loss, good for second in the American in 2014. Tackles Tanzel Smart, Corey Redwine, and Royce LaFrance are also back and should bring stability to their run defense. Cornerback Perry Nickerson was another impact freshman last year. He registered six interceptions in 2014 and was named to the USA Today Freshman All-America team. Tulane will rely on Nickerson and safety Darian Monroe in the backfield after losing four defensive backs, including fifth-round draft pick Lorenzo Doss. Looking ahead to the 2015 schedule, Tulane's toughest tasks come at the beginning of the season in a challenging out-of-conference slate. The Green Wave will take on back-to-back -back ACC opponents in Duke and Georgia Tech. Then they begin conference play in October with five tough consecutive conference games, UCF, Temple, Houston, Navy, and Memphis. And to talk more about the Green Wave, we have Gary Smith on the phone. Up next, we get the inside scoop from New Orleans. Welcome back. We're now joined on the phone by Gary Smith, contributing writer to the New Orleans Advocate and publisher of The Wave Report. He began covering the Green Wave back in 2010. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today, Gary. Glad to be on the show. So last fall, we got to see a lot of new faces. This year, there's a core group of sophomores on the team and quite a bit of raw talent. How's it all been coming together in the offseason? I think pretty well. It was it was tough to judge in, in the spring. Um, they. The, the big thing with Tulane is that they've, um, they've just got to have a, a, a better offense this year. Um, their, their, their quarterback, their redshirt freshman quarterback last year, Tanner Lee, really struggled after showing a lot of potential and talent. And the offense, they only scored more than 14 points um, once in their last nine games. And that's not going <laughs> to get it done. They bring almost everybody back. And, and, and like you said, they have, they have a lot of young players playing, um, a lot of good running backs, coaches. Um, Curtis Johnson feels like they have three NFL caliber running backs on on the roster. A lot of them were young too. Sherman Beatty, um, um, was Edric Thompson, all of those guys. Um, so a, a lot of raw talent, but boy, do they have a lot of room for improvement because their offense just if it was for most of last year, it was it, it just it just struggled with turnovers and penalties and scoring points, and it's hard to win that way. We saw flashes from Tanner Lee last season. What does he have to do for the offense to succeed in 2015? Yeah, yeah. Tan Tanner Lee looked like he was going to have a big year last year going going into the year. Um, in the preseason, he looked terrific, um, had a lot of inner confidence. Tulane went to Tulsa in their opener. He played a terrific game, <laughs> showed a great arm through for over 300 yards. Uh, Tulane was in great position to win and ended up going to overtime. And then on the last play of overtime, he threw an interception um, where he, he a, guy, a defender just fooled him and he threw it right to him. And he seemed to lose a little confidence off of that, which is understandable. He had only actually started one full year of high school at a Jesuit high school in New Orleans. And the, the lack of playing experience showed the, the rest of the way. And defenses kind of figured him out a little bit, and they were able to trick him a lot. And he had the normal growing pains that you're going to have as a, as a first-year starting quarterback. And he was surrounded by an incredibly young receiving core. Because of injuries, Tulane went with an almost all-freshman lineup at, receiver, at wide receiver and tight end. And you combine a redshirt freshman quarterback with a bunch of receivers who aren't sure where they need to go. And he just I, he, he lost a lot of confidence as, as the year went along. Um, he looked a lot better in the spring again. Everybody's almost everybody's returning. All of the receivers are returning, and he has the innate ability to be a, an excellent quarterback in the American Athletic Conference. Um, and 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 we'll see if he if he can get his head on straight again after the, the, the rough year he had last year. Sherman Beatty was another guy that we saw a lot of potential from last season. What does the offense need to do to open up and give him some room? Yeah, he's just, he's a true home run hitter <laughs> in, in football. He had a, a, a against Tulsa. He had an 80 yard run in that game. Um, he, he's a threat to go the distance about every time he, he touches the ball. 
Um, the, the thing is, is Tulane's loaded in the backfield. Um, he, 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 he doesn't get a ton of carries because they've got LeCedric Thompson. They had a freshman last year, true freshman last year, Dontrell Hilliard, who played a lot too. So, and, and Curtis Johnson believes he comes from the New Orleans Saints philosophy of rotating back in and out. Um, basically, though, Sherman Beatty, the key for him is just to stay healthy. He's not a big guy, and midway through last year, he started having some ankle problems. And for a guy whose game is, complete, is completely based on his elusiveness and speed, that really slowed him down, and he was not as effective in the second half of the year. But, man, when he's, when he's, when he's on, he's tough. He, he had three runs last year of 80 yards or more. Uh, I, I think Tulane, they've gone, it, it, not since the days of Matt Forte in 2007, and Tulane had any runs that long. So it, it, as long as they can get Sherman Beatty into open space and, and he's healthy, he's a, he, he's a huge threat for the way. Another freshman that stood out last year was cornerback Perry Nickerson. He had six interceptions last fall. How does the defense as a whole look heading into the 2015 season? I think the defense is definitely the strength of the team. Um, I know I, Athlons um, came out with their all-conference teams recently, and they had four Tulane players on, the, on their second team all-defense in the AAC, and another guy, Tanzel Smart, uh, I think was on the fourth team. Um, Tulane could be really, really good on defense this year. And yeah, Perry Nickerson was sensational. He got tested a lot because he was starting He was starting on the opposite side of the field of, as Lorenzo Doss, who went into last year as a, as a, as a guy who was considered a potential All-American. Doss struggled a little bit last year. And Perry, and Perry Nickerson, by the, end, by the second half of the year, opponents were throwing at Doss more than they were at Nickerson. That's how good Nickerson was as a, as a redshirt freshman. Then you've got Nico Marley, two-year starter at linebacker. Tulane was the only Division I school to offer him a scholarship because he was so small and all he's done is, is, is just make a ton of tackles in his first two years and, he, and he's, one of the, he's one of the hardest hitters in, in, in the country. And, and then their defensive tackles with Tanzel Smart started last year as a young player. He's gonna, he may be one of the best defensive linemen in, in the AAC. They've just got a lot of returning players. Um, Darian Monroe is entering his fourth year as a, as, as a starting safety. He was a huge recruit when he came to Tulane. He's had an excellent career. The defense is going to carry this team this year. The offense just needs to help out a little bit. Tulane finished 2-6 and six in its first year in the American last season. What do you expect to see from the Green Wave in year two? Yeah, it's, it's tough to say a lot. A lot depends on whether the offense can clean up the problems that it had last year. I mean, it, you name the problem, it had it. It struggled to score points. It committed far too many turnovers for an offense that was actually fairly conservative, and it committed far too many penalties. That was the number one emphasis in spring practice from with, with Curtis Johnson is to eliminate those mistakes. Because he's a he's a believer. He feels like with his team that Tulane will be able to run on opponents in the American Athletic Conference, and they just and run first, pass to use the run to set up the pass, be a controlled offense, and don't make mistakes and allow the defense. To, uh, to keep other teams down, and that's his winning formula. And it won't work if Tulane's among the nation's leaders in penalties and turnovers, which they were last year. Last year. So that's the key. Make Tanner, have Tanner Lee not make as many bad reads for interceptions and, uh, and, and limit those penalties because they're not an offense that can recover from a second and 20 or a second and 25, which they had a lot of last year with holding penalties and, off, and um, illegal procedures. New conference last year, but this year is a little different as well with the East and West divisions and a championship game. How does Tulane stack up against the rest of the West? Like, fairly well. Um, I, you know, Tulane, they certainly, they, they should have beaten Tulsa last year. They uh, had, were winning the entire game, did not trail until, until, until overtime and a painful double overtime loss. They actually beat Houston. Um, that was the one. That was, and that was Tanner Lee really looked sharp in that game. That was the only game that the offense played well in, in, the, in the second half of the year. SMU has a new coach. Um, don't know what we're in. Navy's always tough as a new entrant. Hard to, you know, but Tulane's actually had a lot of experience against triple option teams. They, they played Georgia Tech last year and they're going to play three this year. So if any team's ready for Navy, it, it, it'll be Tulane. Um, I think Tulane will definitely be more competitive in, 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 in the West. Um, we'll, we'll see. I don't, is Tulane ready to win the, win the West in the new two-division alignment? Probably not. Still, still a little young on offense, but I definitely don't see a Tulane going two and six in the conference again this year. I think, more, I think 400, 500 is a more realistic option there. Lastly, is there anyone that really stuck out this spring? Maybe a breakout player whose name we haven't heard before. I, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're young wide receiver Teddy Beal. He played a lot as a freshman last year. By the by, the end of the season, he was uh, Tanner Lee's go-to receiver. 
He's, he, he didn't always know where he needed to be as a true freshman starting at wide receiver, but he has a ton of talent, and he is going to he almost certainly is going to be Tanner Lee's go-to guy this year because another freshman who played a lot, Leandre James, has just, Curtis Johnson just said yesterday that he will not play this year, that he may return next year, but for, for team reasons, he won't be on the, on the team this year. So there's a lot's going to fall on Teddy Beal, and he's a very, very talented guy who was recruited by some pretty big schools before he ended, he ended up at Tulane. And I, I can see him having, a, making 60, 70 catches this year and being Tulane's breakaway threat in the receiving core. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today, Gary. Sure, no problem. Again, Gary Smith, contributing writer to the New Orleans Advocate and publisher of The Wave Report. The Green Wave kicks off their season at home September 3rd. That's a Thursday night game against Duke on CBS Sports Network. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen. Have a great day.